Hi. Ow. Oh, oh, it's hard to climb up again. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not suited for physical comedy. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are you doing? I'm so happy. I'm so happy that lucky me. So this video is going to be another one from my Facebook suggestions that I got last week. As per usual, the link to my Facebook is in the doobly-doo. And this was a suggestion that I got from my friend Hannah, who you might remember from earlier videos on this channel. And she suggested I talk about sexual orientations and their representation in the media. Because, you know, that's not a difficult subject or anything. Now there's any number of approaches that I could take with this video and also I'd have to probably do a series of videos in order to like, cover everything that would need to be covered. And ultimately, I feel like I can really only speak effectively from my own perspective as somebody who is asexual. So before I get into the meat of the argument, I'm just gonna give you a few, like, key terms and definitions and stuff so that, you know, you understand what I'm talking about. Somebody who identifies as asexual basically is somebody who does not experience sexual attraction to other people. Somebody who's asexual might still be romantically attracted to people or aesthetically attracted to them. They just don't you know, get get the sexy feelings about them. Asexuality also varies in intensity between different people, so one person who is asexual might be like really, really asexual, while somebody else might experience some sexual attraction, but only to certain people or under certain circumstances. For example, demisexual people are only attracted to people with whom they have a strong emotional bond. Romantic orientation is much the same in this way in that it varies in intensity and preference from person to person. So just like you can be homosexual or heterosexual or pansexual, or asexual, you can also be heteroromantic, homoromantic, panromantic, biromantic, aromantic. It can get pretty complicated. So for example, me personally, I identify as a heteroromantic asexual or possibly a heteroromantic demisexual, which means that I am romantically attracted to dudes, uh, just not into the sexy bits. To yeah, this is an awkward thing to talk about. One of the important things to keep in mind when discussing asexuality is that even though most asexual people aren't really into other people in that way, so to speak, that doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to engage in sexual behavior. Maybe they like sex but don't want to do it with other people. Maybe they only get sexually attracted to people under very specific circumstances. Maybe they do it because they're with a sexual person and they want to make that person happy and make sure they're fulfilled within their relationship. And for some people it's just kind of like maintenance. So yeah, that is a very very brief overview of asexuality for those of you who haven't heard of it. And probably very many of you haven't heard of it, except maybe in biology class, but that's a whole different thing. And there's a few reasons why most people aren't familiar with asexuality as an orientation. And probably at least part of that is because it's estimated that only between 1 and 5 percent of the global population is asexual. However, asexuality is also not particularly well represented in the media. That's where a lot of people learn stuff, so if they haven't heard about it there, obviously the that explains maybe why they haven't heard about it. I'm really bad at words, so I hope you're all understanding what I mean. Now in terms of popular media, I'm really only going to talk about TV shows here because that's mostly what I watch anymore. Also, that's where I seem to see the most apparently asexual characters being represented is on TV. Though it does seem to be getting a little bit more widespread attention, uh, at least partly because there are many very beloved TV characters who do at least appear to be asexual. For example, Sherlock Holmes from the BBC version at least. Also, he's pretty asexual in the books too, although I'm sure there are many fanfiction writers who would disagree with me. Castiel from Supernatural has always kind of struck me as being at least on the asexual spectrum. And then of course probably the most famous example would be Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory. Now all these characters certainly at least appear to be asexual, but that's kind of just it. They only appear to be. Nobody on any of these shows actually outright says that that particular character is ace. Ace, by the way, in case you didn't catch it, is short for asexual. Now some of these are more obvious than others. I mean, Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory is pretty much self-explanatory, really, if you've watched the show enough. And I'm not like a huge fan of the show, but I've watched it before and I've enjoyed it, and it's always been pretty clear that Sheldon's just not interested in that sort of thing. And Sherlock Holmes from the BBC series Sherlock seems pretty obviously asexual, and I mean, if this clip didn't convince you, I don't know what would. Things that bother you never bother me, I feel happy and fine, ha ha! Living in the sunlight, loving in the moonlight, having a wonderful time. And 
arguments for Castiel from Supernatural, well, he just never actually shows any inclination towards sexual encounters until he turns human in season 9. Even then, it still doesn't seem to be that major of a point of interest for him. Not to mention that one time in season 5 when Dean takes him to the brothel, does this look like the face of somebody who actually wants to be there? Now don't get me wrong, I enjoy all these characters and some of them are very dear to me in that way that fictional characters tend to be. However, in terms of using them as representation of the asexual community, they can be, well, quite problematic, to be honest. For one, as I mentioned before, there is never actually any substantial evidence that they are asexual, except that they just aren't all that interested in sex. Also, all of these characters are, in some capacity, I'll just say socially abnormal, by which I mean they are extremely awkward, bordering on antisocial or sociopathic, or just not human, or some combination of the three. They are also often the butt of sexual jokes. For example, everybody in Supernatural and Sherlock are poking fun at the fact that Sherlock and Castiel are virgins, which is not really cool. Just gonna put it out there, but virgin shaming is no more cool than slut shaming is. Nobody likes it. And now, I may be one seriously awkward being, but I am in no way antisocial or even non-human. Sorry, Castiel, you're still my favorite, though. Yeah, the funny thing about asexual people, we're still pretty regular people. I'm sure I'm gonna get plenty of responses that are somewhere along the lines of why does it matter how asexual people get represented in the media? If you don't want sex, just don't have it. Well, for the same reasons that other minorities need fair representation in the media. So that people can learn to empathize with us as real human beings rather than as, at best, social oddities or outliers or at worst, as something less than human or something broken that needs to be fixed. Having better and more clear representation of asexual people in the media would also be helpful in terms of teaching people that non-sexual and non-romantic relationships are just as valid as all the other kinds, and that the interrelationships we form with people, regardless of whether we're sexual or asexual, is complicated. There's a lot of nuances and subtleties, and not everything has to be about sex in a relationship, you know? And for all the stigma that surrounds sexuality, it's also kind of understood to be something that everybody is supposed to want. And it can get pretty alienating for those of us who aren't sexually inclined to be inundated with sexually fixated culture. Ultimately, to me at least, having openly asexual characters in popular media doesn't just say to sexual people, hey, we're here, we exist, and we're valid human beings too. It also says to asexual people, especially those who are young or might be questioning their identity, that you're not alone. And for a lot of younger people who are wondering why they aren't having all these feelings that their peers are supposed to have and wondering if they're broken or somehow an incomplete person, that can be really reassuring, just to know that you're not the only one. And also that you can have a perfectly happy and fulfilled life without sexual relationships, which is Quite frankly, not what the media tells us today. Don't get me wrong, as I said earlier, I still really enjoy all these characters, and many of them I identify with on a personal level. And I'm certainly not gonna ask that every TV show feature an openly asexual character, considering we're like 1% of the population, maybe that would probably be a bit too much to ask. All I'm saying is that it would be really nice if we could just be a little bit better represented in popular culture. Uh, yeah, so that's my topic for today. That was, that was interesting, actually. Thank you, Hannah, for suggesting it. If you guys want to carry on the discussion, you can do so in the comments or on my Facebook page. I'm also going to put links in the doobly-doo to other asexual informational resources and videos and stuff, so you can go look at those if you want to learn more. So yeah, I've got homework to do now. I've got two graphic novels like this big that I need to read for next week, so I I can write an essay on them, so I'm gonna go. Also, I have to eat food. So thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.